I want to let people know this is video from my drone. It's 2.7K, the resolution. The sequence is set up at 2.7K. It's higher definition than 1920 by 1080, but it's not as high of resolution as 4K, obviously. I want to hit play so people can see what's going on here. As we can see, this looks kind of pixelated, the picture in picture. The water here probably looks a little bit pixelated. It might look like there's artifacts even. If I go full screen, we get rid of a lot of the pixelation and the compression artifacts. It looks really clean. I'm going to go back down to the smaller size. Here we see pixelation. It just doesn't look that crisp and clean, you know, unless we're at full screen. With Premiere Pro, though, there's some cool things you can do. We can switch to high quality playback. Now, when I play this back, there's no pixelation, no compression artifacts. It looks like it's ready for broadcast, basically. If I make it full screen, it's a little bit better than it was before, even. So the high quality really works well if you've got a graphics card that's powerful enough to allow you to play back in high quality. I want to let people see what's going on right now. If I simply hit play, we can look at my CPU usage is really low, but my GPU is being used not hard because I'm only playing two layers. I could obviously play three, maybe even four layers, but for the purpose of this video, I just want people to realize that the GPU is being used much more than the CPU. If I hit stop and turn off high quality playback, now we can see that the CPU is not really being used all that much and the GPU is not being used all that much. So enabling high quality playback does take a toll on the GPU. The image quality, like I said, will look just fine if I'm outputting to my 1920 by 1080 broadcast compliant monitor. It looks pretty decent, but it will look better in high quality. So I wanted to show people what it looks like with H.264. If I go to the red one video codec, we can tell this is red one because if I go to the effects control and I switch on the master clip effect for these clips, we can tell it's all the settings of the red one camera. I'll click on this one here so people can tell I'm not making things up. I've made adjustments. Here we go to the master clip effect. I've made adjustments on the Lumetri color panel effects I applied. Same with the drone footage I played earlier. They all have Lumetri color effects applied to them. If we go over here to where it says high quality playback, I have it off right now. And the reason being is I'm going to play three layers of Red One. And I've got my screen recording software going. Three layers not dropping any frames. That has to be pretty impressive. That's my Core i9-9900K along with my GTX 1060. Not too bad. Now, if I come back and hit play, and hit play again, we can see that the CPU usage is pretty low. The GPU is getting pegged a lot more than the CPU. I don't have it on high quality. We're not even playing track mats. I'll skip this. I'll cut to the chase. This is in high quality playback now. It can play one layer easy enough in high quality playback, but it couldn't play those three. We see the CPU usage and the GPU usage. The GPU is still getting pegged much more than the CPU. That's why there's a reason to have an RTX 2070 or even an RTX 2080 Ti. Keep in mind, I'm not using track mats. These are just simple picture in pictures. That's enough of the Red One footage. This is ProRes that was transcoded to H.264. Obviously, I can play this at high quality. If we look over here, high quality playback is on. It's at full resolution, just like the Red One was at full resolution. I should come over to the Red One codec, though, too, and show people that you can scrub 4K really easy. I'm going to go to ProRes at 24 frames per second, 4K. I want people to realize that I do have high quality on. This is kind of interesting, though. I'm going to hit play. If we look at the CPU and GPU, 
the CPU is getting pegged where the GPU isn't. Premiere Pro has a hard time playing back ProRes. I just thought I'd show you several different video codecs and let you know what's up. But I can still play a picture in picture easy enough at high quality. So that's got to be pretty impressive, my new system. To be able to play three layers of Red 1 video codec has to be impressive. I'll come back over here, switch off the high quality playback, hit play one more time. I'm going to go full screen. You can't ask for any better than this. That should be pretty impressive to everybody. And when people say, oh, Premiere Pro doesn't have any real-time performance, as everybody can tell, it can play 4K just fine. And then I can scrub 4K just fine. I don't know what people are talking about. And I want to let people know, I could use my old Haswell CPU and do pretty much all the same stuff I'm doing here. I can just get more layers, and instead of watching it at half resolution, with the i9 processor, I can obviously do everything at full resolution. But everything that I'm doing here could have easily been done with the Haswell processor that I had. And a Haswell CPU and a GTX 1060 is not a super powerful beast of a system by any stretch of the imagination. As you folks can see, all the sequences were playing back at full resolution. The drop frame indicator did not go off once. I was surprised because I was also doing the screen recording and I thought that would trigger it off. The GTX 1060 is a pretty decent card. If you're not going to do multiple layers, sure, you could get by with the GTX 1060. But I want to be able to have my system be a pretty well-matched system. In other words, if the CPU can handle playing back five layers of 4K, I want the graphics processor to be able to handle playing back the five layers as well. I'm making this video to let people know that Premiere Pro uses the CPU to play back the video files, whether it's ProRes, H.264, or the Red One R3D files. The graphics processor handles the picture-in-picture, -picture, color correction, motion blur. Basically, the special effects are handled by the graphics processor. This should give some of you a good indication of what type of graphics card you would need to buy for your particular system. In other words, it wouldn't do any good to spend $490 on a brand new i9-9900K processor and then buy an inexpensive $180 graphics card. At the same time, you wouldn't want to buy a $250 quad-core CPU and run out and buy an RTX 2080 Ti. They'd be pretty mismatched for all practical purposes. I'm getting an RTX 2070. I think it'll be a good match for the i9-9900K. Having said that, if you plan on using a lot of track mats, it wouldn't hurt to get an RTX 2080 Ti. As you can imagine, my i7 Haswell CPU was the weakest link in my video editing system. Now that I got the Core i9-9900K, my GTX 1060 is now the weakest link in my video editing system. I thought that might happen. I want to say that once this uploads to YouTube, I understand that what you see might not be what I see on my computer screen. In other words, when I have high quality playback enabled, it still might look pixelated on your end. I can't help that. The video might look really choppy as it's playing back. I really can't help that either. All I can say is on my system it plays nice and smooth and when I have it high quality enabled, it's super, super crisp and clean.